This is my video on journey through ankle fusion. Before I had my ankle fused, uh, the appointment where we decided with the doctor that we would go ahead and have the fusion, I remember asking him my ankle was at a 45 degree angle. And if you want to know any more about uh, uh, before this, I there are some videos uh, on this same channel, YouTube channel of Journey Through Ankle Fusion, where I talk about what happened before this. But anyway, the doctor uh, was showing me the x-rays and I said, now how in the world did that ankle get so crooked? It, it just kind of gradually did it over the years. And he said, well, evidently, long time ago when you first injured it or in subsequent injuries to that ankle where you sprained it uh, you evidently hurt tendons or ligaments on one side a little more than you did the other and uh, that ten those tendons or tendon and ligament uh, grew weak and there were others that uh, compensated for it and strengthened and caused the heel to move uh, inward. Uh, that was just a theory that he had. He, re he really wasn't sure. But anyway, <laughs> so I guess the moral of that part of the story is I should have gotten something done many years sooner. I should have gone to the doctor um, I did a few times after I would have sprained ankles, but uh, didn't really go through any kind of uh, rehab therapy, and I probably should have, uh, because I've talked to other guys my age since my surgery, and have found out that they had similar um, things happen to them, where they had heard it maybe in high school, 40 some odd years ago and then now in their 60s their ankle was crooked or it was so swollen it wouldn't move and uh, so some old injuries can come back to haunt you if you didn't have any rehab at that time even if you would have had some rehab the doctor my surgeon said it it may have you you may have had all the best rehab in the world and it, it still turned out this way well, anyway, I uh, had the surgery in uh, June of 2013, the ankle fusion. Uh, if you want to know why I didn't have an ankle replacement, uh, that's in a previous video. I talked about it. Anyway, we had the ankle fusion in June of 2013. Uh, they did a nerve block in my left leg because it was the left ankle that, that was being worked on. After surgery, which took about four, four and a half hours, uh, I had had, uh, in surgery, I'd, I'd had uh, several screws and a plate or two put in that ankle. And uh, it, it was quite a bandage to look at after surgery. I felt great after surgery. The nerve block evidently was still in force. And they were wanting to give me pain medication. I said, no, nothing's hurting, but... I should have taken it because about 10 o'clock that night, it was the worst pain that I'd ever been in during my whole life. And then uh, they were playing catch up. They were trying to give me enough medication to dull the pain because I was supposed to go home the next morning. The ankle fusion, I was just supposed to stay overnight. Well, by the next morning, I had had so much pain medication. I was so groggy. They brought the physical therapist in and she was, uh, they had these little stairs that I had to go up and down with, with crutches. And I could barely get out of bed. I was so woozy from all the medicines. And, and I did feel better as far as pain. <laughs> I had no pain, but I could not get around like that uh, uh, therapist wanted me to so she could check her things off so I could leave. Uh, but so finally I just, I drug myself through some of the, well, all the things that she wanted me to do 
and she didn't want to let me out of there, but but she did because uh, I begged her to, and I knew that I would be better. My my wife's a nurse. Uh, I knew everything would be okay. So, if any of you have ever had to travel for a couple of hours after a long surgery, you know probably what I went through coming home. I've talked to several people that have had ankle surgery, knee surgery, whatever, uh, any kind of surgery, and when they, <laughs> on the way home from surgery, if they had to go for two or two and a half hours, it was like horrible, and it is. Uh, it's really hard to keep comfortable. You need, to, if you have surgery like that, that's two hours away, even a half hour away, you need to take blankets, pillows, all sorts of things. You need to have a vehicle where you can uh, lay back and, and have your leg up and be able to stretch it out if you have ankle surgery like I did. Well, got home uh, with a walker. I had crutches and I had a walker. I found out at my age, in my 60s, I could not use crutches anymore. I remembered using crutches in my 20s and 30s and I got around fantastic. I could run with those doggone crutches in my 20s and 30s, but in my 60s, I couldn't use them at all. So I ended up using my walker. Uh, I was non-weight bearing on that left ankle where I had the fusion. It felt tremendously heavy because the bandages were so big and bulky. And it didn't really hurt, so I didn't take any pain medication. Um, my wife, the type of walker I had, I I couldn't, I didn't have a bag on it, couldn't carry anything. So my wife, when she would go to work, she would leave all my food and drinks by me on the couch, and uh, so that I didn't have to get up and try to carry a drink or a plate of, few, of food while going on my walker so because I had to use the walker in such a way that I put no weight at all on that ankle. So that was hard to learn how to get up off of a chair or off of the couch. It was hard to get down on the toilet and back up. We in fact bought uh, uh, something to extend the height of the toilet and it had uh, uh, it made it high enough to where uh, sitting down and getting up was a lot easier. So I was able to do that. Just a few days after surgery, my son wanted to take me to a movie. And I thought, well, okay. And I, I wished I'd have had something else other than my walker at that time, either a, a knee cart or a wheelchair, because walking into the theater up the ramp to the uh, theater that I had to go to to watch the movie just practically wore me out with that walker because I just wasn't used to it. Now within, I'm not sure when we got the knee cart, but the knee cart was the way to go. If you cannot use crutches and you're limited to a walker and it's kind of hard to get around with that uh, we decided we would get a knee cart that was one of the suggestions they had we went out uh, and got one of those at a medical supply pace, place we just rented it or, or leased it it was a heavy duty one and I used that the whole summer practically two weeks after surgery you go back and you get the bandages off and uh, you know, their skin peeling off and so on. And oh, by the way, they told me that by the time I was, that by the time I would go through uh, two or three different casts, that uh, I would have no callus left on the heel of that foot and their right. Callus, callus was completely gone. I've always had huge calluses, huge thick calluses on my feet. But after two weeks, they take the bandage off, they x ray it. And they put a cast on that is non-weight bearing. So I had to be non-weight bearing again for another month. And here's where my memory gets a little fuzzy because it's been, it'll be seven years this June that I had this done. Six weeks after surgery, 
a month after I got my first cast on, you go back and they take that cast off. They x-ray you, take that cast off, and put another one on. And I think I still had a non-weight-bearing cast at that time. The next cast that I got put on uh, that summer uh, was a partial weight-bearing cast. And uh, so they make it flatter not as rounded as the first cast so they actually made it flatter and I was able to just partially uh, have partial weight bearing at that time then uh, four weeks later you I went back and they fitted me with a shoe that would cover and it would velcro over a walking cast I'm not sure if I had a new cast put on at that time or whether I just got the shoe at that time. So for about another month, you know, the rehab on this, there's really no rehab or physical therapy, but the healing time on this and going through casts takes about three months with uh, a fusion. I'm not sure what it takes now with uh, ankle uh, replacements. Uh, the one doctor I went to that was going to do an ankle replacement told me that I would be up on that ankle within a few weeks. And uh, with a fusion, it's, it's not that way. It's a long process. I finally uh, got out of the cast either in sep September probably after the surgery was in June. And that was a great feeling. I had a walking boot at that time. So I, I didn't have, I got to keep the shoe that Velcroed, but I didn't have to use it anymore, and I went into a walking boot. And I was supposed to wean myself away from that, and that would last a month with the walking boot, weaning myself away from it. And a week before I was to go back, I think it was in October, I was supposed to try a shoe a little bit each day. And uh, that's where I will start my next video. Thanks for watching.